Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Aloha and mabuhai. Welcome to another great episode of uh, Think Tech Hawaii, uh, our show, Pinoy Power Hawaii. My name is Emmy Collado Ortega Anderson, your host, and uh, today we're going to have a heart to heart conversation with uh, my BFF, my girlfriend, my sister, uh, and her name is Eileen Parubrub Lam. So, uh, we, uh, before we officially start, again, I want to thank uh, the entire wonderful staff of Think Tech Hawaii for giving us the opportunity to come to your homes weekly to share with you uh, wonderful, inspiring stories in line with our mission to enrich, enlighten, educate, entertain, and we hope to empower. Today, we have a really special subject that is closest to my heart and also closest to the heart of my uh, guest, my sister Eileen Parubrub Lam. Uh, how are you today? Hi, sis. sis. Thank you for having me, and I appreciate the opportunity to um, express my thoughts today also. Thank I can you, always sis. turn to you and <laughs> come to you if my house is on fire, I need a home, I need a shelter to belong, I know you're going to be there for me. I will, sis. Anything for you. Thank you. So uh, anyway, we had just celebrated a wonderful memoriam for your wonderful parents. And uh, I think that's one of the first one that I have attended uh, here in Hawaii anyway. And uh, uh, keep in mind, kakapsat nga ito yung pabuya tayo kaya taluti langwahe ng ususanan tayo itaglish, ilakano Tagalog and English, and we'll be doing just that. So uh, the ones that I could relate to attending uh, in memoriam says are nagita yung umras when we do the annual thing, nagita uh, yung food offering, at nagita yung busi, nagita mm -hmm. yung basi, itlog with the ninyo gan. Okay. Uh -huh. <laughs> but uh, when I attended the memoriam for Nanang and uh, Tatang, I was so amazed of how much love, how much uh, reflections, remembrance, lagip ken ayat. Yes, uh, tell us theme. real quickly about that and why did you want to do it? Well, my, my beloved mom died one year ago, August 6th, and my dad 25 years ago. Mm -hmm. And it's customary that we do a remembrance, uh, I know, a year after. Mm -hmm. and. Um, I wanted to make sure to round out our families, my three brothers and their families and our children, so that they remember, they continue um, to have in their hearts their grandparents, mm -hmm. and especially mm -hmm. us, the, the, our younger generation. My dad died 25 years ago. 25 yeah, years ago. It's not every day that we talk about my dad, mm -hmm. but I wanted them to at least have a memory of the evening and to remember in our, their hearts that mm -hmm. they continue to live on in our hearts also. I wanted to do that for our parent, for our parents. There was a lot of love, in in fact, <laughs> we it got a little bit emotional. Uh, I got emotional because I wanted to uh, think back, reflect back mm -hmm. on uh, those that have gone, that, that are closest to our yes. us, our loved ones, and I I love the way how everyone took part and participated mm -hmm. and shared. Mm -hmm. So how, and and this reminds me about the importance of uh, unity. Yes. That they uh, pinakilangan langan, that they uh, pinakakadwa, pinakakapia ti familia. So, uh, explain to us your role on that because you seem to be like the uh, the core of uh, getting people together. Well, I think that would be my gift in life, um, and I had wonderful mentors. My parents, um, my dad, always told me that um, you know he shared his stories. I'm the oldest, mm -hmm. and. He came from a family of eight. Eight, wow. And his dad. Eight is you know, enough. <laughs> yeah, they came from a very, uh, very humble family, mm -hmm. both sides, my mom and my dad. And my dad's dad died when he was 42. My dad was only five. And my dad, you know, would tell me that he couldn't even recall what his dad looked like because he was so young. Mm -hmm. His youngest brother was only a few months old when his dad died. So. He made it his mission in life that when he had a family, that mm -hmm. he would do the best he could to provide and to love um, his family, his wife and his children. Mm -hmm. And so did my mom. She came from a family of eight also. So 
Families, priority. Everything. everything. Yes. Right, Pri families, everything. And my dad was such a hard worker. I remember him saying to me that when he was 19, he came to Hawaii. Mm -hmm. He had the opportunity to come here, and by the uh, grace of God, he, he lived the American dream. Yes, and, and he, that he did. Right, but in mm -hmm. between, you know, for 10 years, he struggled, you know, like everyone else. You know, mm -hmm. he was the last, came on the last wave of the cicadas. Yes. And um, he knew the value of money. You know, he worked for McCabe Hamilton Rini mm -hmm. for 44 years. And he started off as a longshoreman carrying 100 pounds of sugar or flour on his back. Wow. One dollar a day going up and down the stairs. Dollar a day. Dollar a day. Wow. Right? It took him 10 years to save to go find a wife in 45 days. Oh, that story in itself is amazing. Yeah, that so is, that has that's a story in itself. Uh -huh. Yes, and so he was uh, fortunate enough to um, he and my mom had four of us. Yes, and um, they were really good examples for all of us as family. We were the first to my mom, my dad, and I were the first to come to Hawaii. Mm -hmm. So my dad's siblings, my mom's siblings, they all came through our through our house. Yes. And I remember um, the, all the aunties and uncles were pretty much single then. So I got to know my uncles and aunties, and I got to develop a relationship with them. Yeah. I have to interject, sis. Uh, I agree with you. Uh, your house is like the meeting, meeting yes. house of everybody. <laughs> when they came to your house, uh, the food, the laughter, the camaraderie, uh, companionship, uh, love was yeah. felt at your house, oh, like you belong. Always, always. So, um, I really looked up to your family because uh, uh, as far as my growing up, nothing compared to mm -hmm. your uh, family of uh, togetherness, mm -hmm. complete. You know, I'm from a broken family. I didn't even have a chance to get to know my father. Mm -hmm. But uh, your dad, Tatai, was like my father, yes. and your mom also served yes, like my mother. Yes, sister, my so, special sister. Yes. I appreciate that, and I get teary eyed. So, <laughs> um, uh, tell us your early recollection of uh, how these values uh, that you uh, you saw them, mm -hmm. uh, you watched them uh, apply, mm -hmm. comes handy oh, to I've your had daily so life. So many stories. Yes, tell us. Um, my dad, my dad had asthma to begin with. Okay, so. Uh -huh. He, he always, I know I'm getting a little teary-eyed too, <laughs> reflecting on my mom and dad, and my dad worked so hard for his money, and he wa always wanted to share that dollar with the family, and he'd say stuff like, you know, I don't, I don't smoke, and the reason why is because I save my money uh -huh. so that I can buy a pie so that I can share it with the whole family, we can have ice cream a la mode with our pie, and that was his way of gathering the family together. Mm -hmm. I remember <clears throat> growing up in Kahalu. I, I grew up in Kahalu on the windward side, and my uncles and aunties would come over, and they would butcher a cow, butcher a pig, they'd put all their monies together, and it was a big family day where everybody would take part in having the cow butchered, having the pig butchered, and everybody would uh, help to clean it. Everybody would have their quarter of uh, meat. Yes. And we'd have a barbecue. And, you know, those are the fun of good old days that I remember. And things like that, just the camaraderie of family, just being together no matter what, what we're doing. You know, growing up in Kahalu, where Temple Valley is right mm -hmm. now and all the houses there, I remember going to pick guavas on Sundays and filling up the guavas, uh, the truck with the guavas, mm -hmm. and we'd sell it to Hawaiian Sun. Wow. And again, that would be something that we all could partake benefit in. Benefit from. Benefit yeah. from, and uh, by my dad selling all the truckloads of uh, guavas uh -huh. and, and uh, wow. having those monies just to have another dessert, another meal together. What a uh, resourceful uh, dad yes. that he was always thinking about uh, the well-being mm -hmm. and the goodness of uh, the family. Yes. Saan lang di je bagina ti pinanunot na. No, no di kete giti masakbayan ti pamilya na. And it seems to me that Tatai always had a straight and 
narrow rod that he followed. Yes. And wherever that road took him, he always stayed in a straight and narrow path. And his family was his number one priority. priority. And this is the substance of our show today. How we could teach our future generation. No kasano nga ipasa tayo dagito yung election can moral itibiyag tatap no dagiti uh, future generation dagit dagito yung obubing uh, ket uh, makasurusuro da uh, ket dagito yung uh, napatigla una yung asurusuro moral election itibiyag ket usaren tayo dagito yuswat tayo tatap no nasaya at tipagbalinan ti familiayo so that our family will uh, be back to having uh, that solid foundation that we really need at this uh, mm -hmm. space and time uh, we're going to come back more of these heartwarming stories you're listening to Pinoy Power Hawaii uh, thank you again uh, Think Tech Hawaii Aloha! I want to invite all of you to Talk Story with John Wahee every other Monday here at Think Tech Hawaii. And we have special guests like Professor Colin Moore from the University of Hawaii who joins us from time to time to talk about the political happenings in this state. Please join us every other Monday. Aloha! Hey, Stan the Energy Man here on Think Tech Hawaii. And they won't let me do political commentary, so I'm stuck doing energy stuff. But I really like energy stuff, so I'm going to keep on doing it. So join me every Friday on Stand Energy Man at lunchtime, at noon, on my lunch hour. We're going to talk about everything energy, especially if it begins with the word hydrogen. We're going to definitely be talking about it. We'll talk about how we can make Hawaii cleaner, how we can make the world a better place, just basically save the planet. Even Miss America can't even talk about stuff like that anymore. We got it nailed down here. So we'll see you on Friday at noon with Stan the Energy Man. Aloha. Welcome back to the second portion of our show. My name is Emmy Ortega Anderson, uh, the host for Pinoy Power Hawaii, uh, where we have a chance to uh, discuss uh, subjects that are closest to the heart. And today we ha are having a heart-to-heart -heart conversation with my BFF, my good friend, my sister, and uh, she's my uh, resource person. Every time I need help, I go to my sister Eileen, <laughs> and she's always ready. Like uh, she's the warrior, the conqueror. And we are talking uh, about the valuable lessons and the wonderful tools uh, of life that she has learned from her wonderful parents mm -hmm. uh, that are uh, now in uh, a better place, a better light. But these pertinent lessons, these tools, the gitoya character. Uh, those that she learned growing up uh, has become a very, very important role or tools uh, for her, the future of her family and, of course, uh, her well-being. So uh, we're going to go back and uh, reflect. Lagip ken ayat or ayat ken lagip. Either way you say it, it's... it's uh, uh, about being uh, well-rounded, having love, which is the main sustenance of uh, our family. Yes. So uh, t tell us how you applied the teachings of, especially Nanai, who is such a warrior, she's a ninja in uh, <laughs> today's uh, term. How does these lessons that she taught you uh, became uh, pertinent or valuable in your life? Well, my mom, I give my mom credit. She was 25 years old. When she came to Hawaii, I was two years old. I was born in the Philippines. And they, my parents bought a house in Kahalu, uh -huh. and where there's no, no Filipinos except for one family. It was Peter Aduha, who was the first judge in Hawaii. Ah, that's Melody's dad. Yes. Yes. And their, their family owned two houses on one lot. Uh -huh. So they were our neighbors along with a Hawaiian family, a Portuguese family, a Chinese family. Uh -huh. We had just about one of every kind in our neighborhood. Right. And we were so fortunate to be in that type of surrounding because culturally, it sort of all melted us together yes. and we learned from each other. 
Yes. And that was wonderful that my mom learned and adapted herself uh, to the people around her. So my mom took care of us uh, until she learned how to drive. Uh huh. And after that, it was like you couldn't stop her from. Uh... <laughs> She's like the Energizer Bunny. Every time I turn or every time I was around Nanai, I couldn't help but. Uh, feel her energy and I wanted to be so much like her uh, because everything that she touches excuse the term but uh, turn into gold uh, she has a green thumb mm -hmm. yeah, she would plant anything on the ground and it would grow yeah? like the right. 10 uh, Samoan coconuts that she <laughs> left me at my farm yes. and all, all the air plants she knew about air plants when air plants was not even popular uh, yes she so did, uh, she maintained a beautiful yard and we try to upkeep it so mm -hmm. all the things that my mom did uh, raising three young boys uh, all became Eagle Scouts and um, we were a scouting family and scouting and Girl Scouting yes, family, yes, so, thanks to you. Yes, so that carried on into my life. All the things that my mom did, I tried to emulate because yes. the things that she did, I knew were good and oh, gold. So perfect tried, role model. <laughs> mm -hmm. So she was, yes, a wonderful role model for mm -hmm. me. So I wanted to emulate her and make her proud um, because she had really high standards. She did. She had very high standards. Uh -huh. and. Uh, my mom was never the type to gloat over any kind of accomplishment that me and my brothers um, reached. Um, as Christopher would say, she'd probably just nod her head, or I would never be able to get a compliment for her, from her, like, oh, right. good job, daughter, or anything like that. I would actually have to ask her, Mom, was that okay? Uh huh. And but to her, it's like an everyday happening, everyday right, thing. A, right. Yeah. Nothing was a celebration to her because life goes on. Right. And uh, my observations of her, she never wasted a minute. Not if she a, could work <laughs> 24 hours a day, she would till the land, she would work in a garden, would. she would cook, or just uh, basically what she does best entertain and uh, extend her warm hospitality yes. and make people comfortable. And that's what I remember most about uh, Nanai, her yes. warm heart and warm hospitality. Yes. And I was so fortunate that I, you know, my husband and I stayed in Hawaii. We never ventured off. But with that, um, from the day that our son was born to the day she died, she cooked five meals a week for myself and my brother's family. And um, I find That's that unheard of. <laughs> I find that amazing. Yes. That she did all the groceries. She, and, you know, with my dad, she was the typical, I guess, Filipino wife where my dad worked hard, so she'd have, like, everything from salad to his soup to two main dishes to his rice to his dessert to his coffee. She really adapted to yes. uh, the uh, perfect American standard. Yes. And, yeah. and, and with that, she was raising four of us and had a job also and maintained her house. And I remember growing up, she was teaching me how to iron. Mm -hmm. And she would starch, you know, the uh, boiling water with the starch and mix it up. The old-fashioned yes, way. And dip it and dry yes. it and then having to sprinkle water on Before it. Before you iron it. Up. it. And then after that, when it's all nice and evenly uh, moist, then I'd iron it. Did I so you she, never <laughs> see anything like that, sis. So uh, those are really valuable is, lessons. Yes, and yes. if they were white, I'd have to put it in the bluing, Mrs. White's bluing solution. <laughs> To get it looking, right. and you know, you know, it just amazes me the things that uh, she taught me and passed on to me, where all our sheets had to be ironed uh, and our and our uh, pillowcases. And I, I could never figure out why it's going to get rumpled anyway. Right. But no. But that uh, was within her standards. Again, right. Right. Uh, she said this vision, uh, this way of life that she wanted to upkeep. Right. But she did it in a way where she didn't want any, any accolades or, oh, all right. Because let's get the typical nga pada tanga Pilipino nga, oh, de anak ko ingeniero, de baroque doctor, abogado. You know, the Peruvian family are very quiet very um uh, they don't brag or boast oh, no and it's it's quite opposite from uh, other filipinos that i know that always like to bra brag about their accomplishment but uh, it brings me to your quiet way of doing things sis. Uh, and this is why 
we are, uh, your name has been turned and nominated so many times oh for uh, the Empowered Award. Empowered uh, and influential Filipina uh, that doesn't uh, wait for things uh, to uh, uh, become public, but yet you go about your little way of uh, making a difference in your own quiet way. Yeah, if I didn't brag about you having those talents uh, where uh, you win every year the best uh, Christmas, oh, uh, the best decorated tree in Honolulu Hale, uh, they would never know the talent behind that. Oh, but today I'm gonna take the time to have all these bragging rights. Um, this arrangement that uh, Eileen arranges for everybody and shares with everyone to enjoy, uh, you never really uh, uh, had a serious course in, is it Ekabana or the flower arranging? That's my newest passion, yeah, Ekabana. Okay. Uh, that, she can uh, turn uh, driftwood into something magical or something uh, so artsy that it becomes a masterpiece. Oh, sis. Yeah. I think you're over-exaggerating <laughs> And that. then um, uh, you go to the kitchen you go to Eileen's house and you always uh, get a taste of her uh, wonderful way of uh, cooking and making uh, the dish so uh, delectable, enjoyable, yes. it, all these things. See? I, I think I was uh, born to serve others. Uh, that was my role in life. And um, I think um, a lot of it has to do with my Catholic faith in uh -huh. serving others. Yes. But certainly uh, the uh, characters and uh, those uh, traits mm. that you learned from your mom growing up. Yes. And even your dad, who's, uh, who, who passed on 25 years ago, uh, those lessons in life makes a really big difference. He turned those boys into men, yes, warriors. Uh, if I need someone to uh, do a, a, a little fix-it for my house, I would call on uh, Edwin, <laughs> Max, Walter, and I'm sure they They're would come. Handy. Yeah, They're quite handy. Yeah, quite handy. And in today's world yeah. where everything is about technology or you push a button, you get it fixed, but that's not how it works. <laughs> uh, there are times when we still do need the physical labor, physical know-how to apply these things that they learn from their father, who served such a great role model for the boys mm -hmm. uh, to emulate. And today, they are very, very successful. Uh, tell us a little bit about your brothers that uh, have followed your dad's advice and footsteps. Well, my oldest, the brother below me, they're all younger than me. They used to be called the uh, Three Bambinos, the Three Musketeers, uh -huh. that's what my dad would call them. Yes. <laughs> and um, my brother, Max, um, he is with the Mitchell Waterworks Division in mm -hmm. California. So he's been there for over 25 years. Uh, I'm not quite sure what his real title is, but uh -huh. I know he has another uh, co-worker that they've developed the technology for the Mitchell Waterworks Division in California. Uh, that's a has, big task. Yes, it's it about it keeping. Has, it has to do with the drones. So that's his new program that uh -huh. he's working with. So they have quite a few problems, um, and they they're making it so that the drones can be up there to find the spots where they have the problems. So they're going to be trying to work that into the uh, different California systems uh -huh. of the waterworks. Wow, and, that's okay. a big job. It is. It is. Okay. And then my other brother were, is in San Jose, mm -hmm. and he is with a company called Picaro, and he is the guy that um, develops these um, software for companies uh, for security. Now, again, I'm not quite Another sure. Another important, yeah. yeah right, we don't right, want right. to give away their right, secret, right. but very <laughs> important then, role in society. Right. And my uh -huh. brother Edwin this year, I'm really Edwin. proud. I'm really proud of him. Yes. And uh, this year, he we 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 kid him that we call him General at home because that's he is pretty, a general. Uh, that's what he's kind of equivalent to. I'm not quite sure. That I always I, gave him the five star <laughs> salute. <laughs> so he is the uh, commanding officer for the the National Guard. They have a officer warrant academy, mm -hmm. and he's in charge of all of that for. 
uh, the state of Hawaii. Wow. So I'm quite proud See? of him. Success stories, but he never, none of your brothers would yeah. ever uh, brag or boast about right. what they have fulfilled in life. But I know that Tata is sitting up in heaven and saying, oh, that's my boy, yeah. and very, very proud. Right. Uh, and it also uh, transformed into your boys, because mm -hmm. he, they grew up watching this uh, uncle. wonderful uh, uncles right. that they also uh, copied and yes. uh, followed their their footsteps. Yes. Uh, tell us real quickly about your boys. Oh, I have three boys all, so I think it was, again, destiny that I would follow my mom, one girl and three uh, boys. So the boys, my boys are well on their way. My oldest son is the uh, uh, finance manager for the Navy Exchange here in Hawaii. Uh -huh. And um, he's setting up his own business now to do with uh, the bags, the recycle bags. So he's going to be the um, have a con he has a company so, uh, Wonderful. set up already. So and, conscious. And, <laughs> yes, and I have another one that mm -hmm. uh, is in California. Mitchell. Right, mm -hmm. and he is the director for a glass company. Um, in fact, they're making that, they put in the glass for that new bank, uh, that American Savings Bank that's uh -huh. coming up across of um, across of the uh, Ala Park. That's their company. They do they do big um, business. Um, Glass work. Right, they did the Dallas Cowboy Stadium. Okay, so uh, real quick, uh, Daniel, of course, oh, Daniel. you call him uh, Dano. <laughs> Dano, yes, uh -huh. he, he just graduated with uh, Honolulu's Finest, uh, yes. class, uh, class 180 the, with the police department. So, I was uh, there for that yes. uh, wonderful celebration yes. and uh, uh, don't forget our princess. I got to put in my uh, oh. the, my princess, <laughs> Princess yeah. Marissa. Yeah. There, uh -huh. she's on her way back to school in about two weeks. Back to um, Oxy Occidental in California, yes. where well, sis, President Barack Obama went for two years. Yes. Wonderful! Yes. It, it's yes. always uh, good to hear uh, such great success stories. I wish we had more time. You know, uh, the uh, uh, the time has gone yes, uh, so yes. quickly, and we have come full circle. But uh, what I wanted to leave was uh, the things that you shared about uh, keeping uh, unity, yes. these valuable lessons in life that you learned from your parents growing up, which transformed to uh, uh, your own family, and you've all become a success story. And those are the things that we need more in this life, to inspire us, to uh, give us hope. Uh, to uh, uh, give us, uh, help us feel empowerment that anything that we set in our mind can be done if we believe and, of course, we keep our faith. And I know that uh, faith is a strong yes. uh, foundation in your life and in your family. Yes. Uh, so we want to encourage you again. I want to thank my guest, my uh, sister, Eileen Parubrublam, for the heart-to-heart uh, -heart, uh, stories that she shared with us. We invite you to tune in again to Pinoy Power Hawaii, uh, where we aim to enrich, enlighten, educate, entertain, and we hope to empower you. Thank you again, Think Tech Hawaii, for the opportunity. Mabuhay, maraming salamat po.